uh, we had started this uh, digitization of uh, uh, laboratory documentation from the year 1994. Uh, it was in various stages of development and we have uh, significant inroads in this. Uh, laboratory information system, when we speak of, it is not kept, uh, it is not confined to the laboratory as such, it does not function in isolation and it functions optimally only when the entire hospital workflow is so it's an integral part of the hospital information system. But uh, uh, the most critical thing is when the entire hospital information system, uh, the medical records division and the laboratory information system are probably the earliest ones which are established. Uh, when we talk of laboratory information system or e-laboratory, we have to understand that it's not just availing laboratory reports or laboratory uh, records in an online form, but to make sure that the entire workflow is online, starting from the registration, generation of a requisition form in OPD or in IPD bots, a collection of samples, generation of uh, laboratory specific unique numbers with uh, multiple levels of barcoding, interfacing of automated equipment in case of uh, auto analyzer, if it is uh, a descriptive report such as in radiology or histopathology, typing of manual reports, updating and authorizing these laboratory reports, generating laboratory statistics, uh, to be able to provide online appointment for treatments, and to be able to uh, provide the reports to the patients through registered mobile numbers. All these are part of the uh, workflow when we talk of e laboratory. Now, what is the real need for the C laboratory? It is essentially envisaged to make the services patient friendly. Uh, as the hospitals grow larger, there are enormous challenges for the patient because multiple specialized laboratories are there. They are all situated at different locations in different buildings which are very far away physically. And uh, patients will have to negotiate through several complicated uh, labyrinthine network to be able to reach these facilities. And uh, specialized facilities and investigations also need appointments. Patients will find it extremely difficult to go to each of these facilities personally and physically to get these appointments. Also, a clinician who wants to raise an urgent uh, investigation should be able to do so, it should be able to visualize. If it has to reach physically, it may be a challenge. Another major challenge is patients uh, generally reach these larger hospitals from very long distances in search of very specialized services and the reports may be available after several days. So, uh, digitization also enables the patients to be able to access these reports through their authorized mobile numbers without having to physically travel and reach the hospital every time. So another major advantage is they can go and uh, have their consultation with their uh, particular physician or surgeon in the particular OPD uh, and they don't have to come in search of individual laboratories to collect various reports. So reports are available readily through the hospital information system. And uh, another thing is for the patients, they will be able to retrieve old reports which are uh, even 15 years, 20 years uh, down the line. So those are the major advantages that the patients tend to get the laboratory. This is one copy of uh, a report, a model report, just to highlight how the details of who has raised the investigation, the details of the report per se, okay, this particular investigation was so when the sample was collected, when the sample was reported, all these things could be obtained and it is also possible to provide a normal range and the particular values that the patient has. Okay? So these reports are actually, depending on the nature of the investigation, you tend to have multiple forms of reports. What are the advantages an administrator uh, gets by having an e-laboratory? One, they have access to regulate multiple levels of uh, who has raised the requisition, how many requisition has come from a particular department, all those things can be regulated. Administrator can also decide on who is having the particular report, who gets a chance to access these reports. All these are administrative controls. For example, HIV reports are not issued to patients. Can I restart from where it was left? Or? Uh, one slide ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So essentially, not just the patients, but the hospital administration also gets lots of benefits by having a digitized uh, system. It enables provision to regulate access points at the level of request in general, authorization of a report, and the one who gets the access to post. Also helps the administrator in generating statistics, ways, which specialty is raised, which type of investigation, how many such investigations have been raised, what is the, uh, what is it, uh, repetition uh, rate. So all those things can be monitored. So, it is also possible for the administrator to uh, generate turnaround time data. Uh, can have a, the administrator can also have an audit of consumables that are being used. Uh, what is the volume of particular consumables being used for the total number of investigations being performed? In addition, it is also possible to have an asset management system whereby the dates of installation, the CAMC records, and maintenance records of the equipment can also be based and uh, reviewed periodically. For the clinicians, the single most important point why they like the e-laboratory is it helps them to prioritize urgent investigations at the time of generation of the request. They can view all their requests that are being generated from their specialty for internal auditing purposes. You will also be able to follow the trend of each numerical parameter. I will show this as a picture. It's able to say monitor a particular parameter such as a glucose or a serum creatinine in a graphical form to follow how these uh, parameters are changing for a given patient during their follow-up. Ability to maintain long-term follow-up with review of old records from the digital art. Uh, the same thing would have been extremely difficult with the manual paper-based report. And the ability to, after you raise the request in form, they, the clinician will also be able to follow the status of the sample and the status of the investigation through each step of the sample using an authorization. Example of how it is possible to graphic follow up a trend for a particular during follow up. So, these are the advantages of uh, having a digitized record for laboratory uh, uh, information system. And uh, for the laboratory doctors, laboratory significantly minimizes the errors at uh, pre analytical, analytical, and post analytical levels. Chances of sample mix up are extremely rare because we are having multi level barcoding for at each. Uh, level of entry and each level of workup in the laboratory. And the wrong and inappropriate entries in the request and forms are extremely minimal because the whole thing is digitized. Documentation process is extremely superior and uh, robust. And within the laboratory also, interface of equipment and multi level barcode significantly removes chances of sample mixes and computerized records ensure accountability. At all levels of technical staff, they are given independent login credentials. And at any level, errors can be fixed. If any particular person is responsible, the particular person, the staff could be put up repeated levels of training to minimize such errors. Post analytical online records ensure robust report distribution and with multiple identity checks. In addition to all these things, data retrieval, access for research, access to archives, consumable and equipment audit, and to follow investigation trends, etc., all these are available for. Having spoken of all the advantages of e-laboratory and for having also set up uh, one of the systems which uh, is functioning for a very, very long time in a very large hospital, let us discuss about some of the challenges and the requirements that are there from the institute side. On the institute, oh, there has to be a uh, very robust assistance in place for hardware requirements, for storage servers, and with processing capacity because in a very high volume hospital, if the processor capacity is minimal or very slow, then the entire workflow gets stalled. We need to have very strong processing capacity. We need to have robust networking capacity. And our software should be having modern features which are customized to the hospital workflow. Digitization is an extremely important requirement because each hospital will be having very peculiar requirements. And all these customization would, uh, only if the customization is made Will these uh, e laboratory systems be taken up by the individual? Otherwise, they will always hesitate and it will never be a success. When we talk of uh, one more thing, we have this FHIR compatibility. Now, the latest version is 4. 
and the earlier it used to be HL7 compatibility with versions B2 and uh, version 2 and version 3 etc. These versions essentially looks for interoperability of resources between various institutions. And when we go for these equipment, both equipment, software, hardware, everything should be compatible with latest FHIR or HL7 compatibility. Whenever we go for a particular software new, we should ensure that there is both forward and backward integration compatibility so that our records, our systems which are there in the earlier uh, uh, software, it should be possible to migrate them to the latest uh, thing. It should not happen that all these are standalone because as you keep having these uh, 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 software for over a longer period of time, it will go through multiple levels of development and we cannot, uh, we need to make sure that the entire data is available in a seamless manner without any compartmentalization uh, and uh, it is not just a question of purchasing all these hardware, networking, software and the storage servers etc. We should also ensure continuous maintenance of all these facilities uh, and we need to keep on continuously upgrading and customizing these changes according to the hospital workflow. These are challenges where what we have faced uh, with having a e-laboratory is uh, whenever there is a malware attack or there are bugs in the software or there are crashes due to hardware and networking failure, firewall or antivirus failure, this is a significant disruption in the hospital workflow affecting the patient care. So the downtime has to be extremely minimal and uh, once you go for a complete digitization of end-to-end -end workflow, it becomes extremely difficult for one to suddenly transform to a manual workflow. Major challenge. So it is not an easy task to suddenly transform oneself from a digital platform to a manual platform. That is something which one needs to have in mind. So to re-emphasize the point, the hospitals which going for a complete transformation to e laboratory will need to ensure strong firewall regulations in place with the latest uh, advanced firewall uh, systems. We should ensure that our antivirus is updated and is compatible with all the hardware software requirements. We should ensure that there is no failure of our antivirus software. Uh, also, we should ensure that there will be thousands of computers which should be accessing these data from the servers. So, there should be not, not a single computer which is linked to the hospital information system and the laboratory information system should be without an antivirus. They should not be able to access these services without having a latest updated antivirus uh, software in their system. We should ensure that our servers are continuously maintained, monitored and we should ensure avoid server failures, have uh, power backup. We should ensure that our processors are of sufficient capacity. It should not, we should not uh, end up having a failing CPU. If our processing capacity is low, then the entire hospital workflow gets uh, put down. And this is a major problem which is becoming more and more uh, common these days. Malware attacks, particularly when you give access to patients reports from outside the hospital or when you give the provision of registration of uh, patients for your hospital service from outside the institute, you are actually giving a provision for somebody from outside the hospital to be able to access uh, indirectly and that can be as a potential scope for malware attacks. And To re-emphasize the point, to ensure that we are able to overcome these challenges and requirements, the institute should maintain a very high level of security for its data. The institute's firewall should be updated and should be regularly monitored with a strong regulatory policy. 
the institute should also have a strong in-house IT team, including experts in software development, hardware, and ground-level troubleshooting for day-to-day -day, uh, issues in the hospital. There should be good maintenance of network and firewall to ensure failure. Of, uh, these uh, systems do not take place because uh, small failure can result in a major disruption in the hospital. And uh, most important, the data should be backed up on a real-time basis in independent internal servers which are not connected to external servers so that at least your data will remain intact and this data backup should be real-time and regular. All the more important, you need to have load balancing servers so that whenever your capacity is exceeded by a large volume of data transactions, say for particularly on a Monday morning when there is a huge volume of patients turning up in the OPD, the servers tend to be uh, overloaded and the processors are also at its maximum function. So, how does it uh, look at, uh, how does the overall scheme of things uh, available in the context of uh, Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, which is previously called as National Digital Health Mission. It's a flagship program of Government of India. It ensures that the, the patients get a safe access to all the laboratory records anytime, anywhere. It also ensures a safe archive and retrieval option for patients to consult any doctor of their choice. So, in one way, this uh, ABDM, once it is fully implemented, will ensure that the individual hospitals do not need to provide a patient portal because they can integrate it with ABDM. That way, the hospitals will be much less prone for malware attacks because then the malware attacks will have to be generated from within the hospital, which can be regulated by the institution. Uh, and patient portals which provide access to patient reports from uh, to outside the hospital can be avoided because that can be provided through the ABDM portal. Uh, and the ABDM portal can also be used to access uh, hospital records digitally for multiple purposes such as accreditation, for auditing, for assessing turnaround time, for evaluation of the uh, hospital or the laboratory's performance. All these can be uh, done at a national level using the digital records. Also, Workload assessment in each specialty can be done at a centralized level uh, for assessment of, say, infrastructure and workload for teaching institutions. Uh, say, like in the case of a National Medical Council uh, inspection, some inspector will have to travel physically and look at the manual records. Once the things are digitized, the records are there, uh, which can be scrutinized uh, very easily. One need not uh, be physically uh, be present to assess these kind of records. Actually, physical assessment can be used for much higher level of assessment rather than for assessing these uh, records because those things can be done on a digital uh, mode. Thank you very much for this opportunity.